evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So we are in the session number two of this last week. So we are going to begin with the topics that we have for this day. And I'm going to charge the document in which we are um, working and we are going to continue with the information that we were working yesterday. Uh, remember that we were uh, working on a grammatical um, topic. So we are going to continue from that idea. So yesterday we were talking about the present per uh, present perfect tense that is part of the present tense. And we were talking about that in English, we have like different uh, tenses in which we can like um, use specific works, specific structures in which we need to uh, we can say like, depending on the idea that we have, we're going to use a specific structure. And in this case, we were seeing different details about the present perfect and the elements that we need to uh, complete the ideas. And in this case, we were talking about some um, actions that uh, begin in the past or are happening in the past, but also it has like um, its influence in the present and it is continuing in the present. So in that case, it's very important that we can think about the different activities or the different um things that we did in, or we are doing in our life that is uh, focusing on a different aspect of the life. So in that case, we were talking about this structure is kind of uh, easy to understand what is the structure because we were talking about the use of the auxiliary. And you know that uh, the use of the auxiliaries is very, very important when we are um, talking in English because it is helping us to understand what is the time, what is the tense that we are using. And also it is uh, helping us to um, have like more details about uh, these kind of actions or something like that. So in this case, we were talking about the use of the auxiliary have and has, and also what is the uh, the form of the verb that we are going to use to complete these sentences? We were talking about positive, negative, and questions using this structure. Now, we are going to continue with the information that we have about the uses of the, the present perfect tense, and then we are going to continue with other uh, time. And uh, it is kind of... Uh, the next topic is kind of a uh, review because we're going to like talk about a tense that is like one of the basic tenses that we learn when we are um, talking about English and the process of acquiring the language. So we're going to see some details that we already know about this tense, but we are going to continue.
And now I am sounding kind of weird. Uh, my voice is kind of weird because um, I had a, an activity today in the place in, in um, I am working. Uh, and it was kind of uh, exhausting in that way. So I am sounding kind of like if I am having a cold or something like that, but it's because of the work. So I think that it's going to sound kind of weird, kind of funny, but it's for the activity that we had. But give me a moment. <clears throat> oh, it's not here. Okay, in this case, we are going to continue with the last part. That is, thank you. That is um, the uses. And you know that we have different images. We have three different images on the document in which you can see like different details related to this topic. So we are going to make this one like this. We have the structure. We have like the uses or in which cases you are going to use this a present perfect tense and also the six reasons in which we need to use these structures. Or in this case, we are talking about the present, the, the present perfect. But we are going to continue with the information that in this case we have um, the examples in this case. So we have here how to use the present tense with adverbs. And then we are going to uh, see the six ex examples of when, in this case, six examples of when to use the present perfect tense. Vamos a, um, en este caso, vamos a ver ahora seis ejemplos de cuándo deberíamos usar nosotros esta estructura. Eh, ya vimos que es una estructura bastante importante. Eh, que pues básicamente nos da una, un puente para que nosotros hablemos del pasado, pero también que incluyamos cosas del presente. O sea, es una acción que no está completamente eh, terminada y que puede continuar en el futuro puede tener cierta influencia. So we are going to continue with six examples of when to use the present perfect. Vamos a ver en qué momentos deberíamos nosotros utilizar este, esta estructura. So, in the number one, an ongoing action that is started in the past, but has not yet been completed. Aquí empezamos. Cuando es una situación o una acción que está pasando o que inició en el pasado, pero que no ha sido completada todavía. Quiere decir que empezó, ¿verdad? Hace que un año, una semana, un mes, eh, un par de años, pero que todavía se sigue llevando a cabo esta acción en el presente. Ahora, ¿cómo podemos nosotros entender de qué tipo de acciones estamos hablando? Bueno, en este caso tenemos el siguiente ejemplo. 
The professor has taught here for two decades. The professor has taught here for two decades. So in this case, we're talking about someone that is working in the same place uh, since the, the beginning, for example. So in this case, maybe you begin working on a specific place 10 years ago, for example, and now you are in the same place. So in that case, it's something that began in the past, but now is continuing in the present. Estamos hablando, ¿verdad?, de este tipo de acciones en las que eh, básicamente decimos que estamos llevando a cabo la misma acción. Así como en el ejemplo que tenemos ahí, el profesor, ¿verdad?, lleva eh, trabajando en el mismo lugar o lleva enseñando en el, en el mismo lugar por mucho tiempo. So in that case, it's a, an, an action that is starting in the past, but it has not yet been completed because maybe you are going to continue working on that place for a couple of years. So in that case, it's an ongoing action. Number two, a series of the same action, a series of the same action completed multiple times in the past likely to happen again in the future likely to happen again in the future okay aquí habla de acciones o de la misma acción que se repite, ¿verdad? O se ha completado muchas veces en el pasado. Y probablemente pueda volver a suceder en el futuro. So in this case, uh, we are completing the same action multiple times or the same activity and uh, maybe it's going to happen again in the future. And we have this example. I think that this example is kind of accurate for this kind of information because maybe we have the same situation because I I am this kind of person. So we're going to, to see the, the example first. And the example say, I've seen the movie six times. I've seen the movie Six times. Aquí estamos hablando de una acción que se completa múltiples veces y que puede llegar a pasar en el futuro, ¿verdad? Puede volver a ocurrir esta acción. Ahora, el ejemplo habla de haber visto una película seis veces. I think that um, their example is one of my favorite because I, I am this kind of, of person that likes to see the same movie uh, like many times and i have very specific movies that i like i've seen a couple of movies more than five times for example and it sounds kind of weird because maybe you are thinking but that is not necessary or that is kind of boring or you are seeing the same things but at the end, when you are like seeing this kind of movies and uh, you watch it like in different moments of your life, you are going to find different messages. Um, I remember something uh, that I read like years ago. I think I was a, a teenager, I guess. Maybe 15 years, like the middle of time. Um, and... Uh, someone was talking about the a book, I think. They were talking about about a book. Um, and someone said that 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 kind of books are those 
kind of things that you need to read a lot of times during your lifetime. When you are a teenager, when you are a young adult, when you are an adult, and when you are like an old people or something like that. And you are going to find different messages from the moment in your life that you are. And you are going to find something new. Maybe you have read the, the, the book multiple times, but depending on the situation that you are living, depending on the moment in which you are like in that moment, you are going to find something interesting, something new. Yo creo, si no me equivoco, estaba uh, leyendo como reseñas, críticas o algo por el estilo de el libro del principito. Era el principito. Y alguien decía que no mucha gente le llamaba la atención el principito eh, por la forma en la que estaba escrito, por la forma en la que se hablaba o de la que se explicaban las cosas. Y alguien decía que era necesario volver a leer ese tipo de libros en diferentes etapas de nuestra vida. Eh, lo podemos leer cuando somos niños, cuando somos adolescentes, adultos jóvenes, adultos, quizás cuando eh, ya somos personas de 40, 50 años y también cuando ya somos adultos mayores y que siempre vamos a encontrar algo nuevo, un nuevo mensaje, algo que le dé más sentido, ¿verdad?, a la historia. Y me pasó algo parecido eh, con un libro. This, this is not related to, to movies, but it is related to books. I was reading, um, I don't know. Estaba leyendo el libro La Mecánica del Corazón. If I am not wrong, that is the name. But I was like, how many years? 19 or 18. Creo que tenía como 18, 19 años. Um, leí la mecánica del corazón y me pareció absurda. Me pareció una, una historia absurda. Uh, because they were talking about um, love. They were talking about uh, taking risk in a relationship. Uh, they were talking about someone that is like Uh, that wants to give everything, uh, someone that is sick, because that person is not sick, it has a different condition, but it is like um, that person wants to give everything for the other, uh, the, the loved one. And, and it's kind of funny because I was like thinking the first time, ah, he is kind of a very bad kid because he is thinking about love in that way and he is sick and he is going to die if if he is loving the girl and something like that. Me enojé con el libro, no me gustó, me pareció un poco absurdo por lo mismo, porque la historia era un romance arriesgado, doloroso, en el cual el chico pues tenía una condición, él le habían puesto un reloj, un corazón de reloj, que es como estas, estas um, estructuras que llevan los relojes antiguos. Entonces le, le decían reloj de cucú, que así se le llamaban a esos relojes, ¿no? Uh, es un, un, un corazón mecánico, like, that is the, the main idea. Y si él se enamoraba, según lo que se decía, ¿verdad? Si él se enamoraba, iba a morir. And I was thinking, oh, I prefer my, my, my health than love in that moment of my life. Because I was like focused on studying, on to be a good a student, to have good grades and all of the things. So in that moment, I thought that that kind of uh, elements, that kind of uh, feelings are not important. I read again the, the book like, mm, I don't know. Four years ago, yes, like four years ago, um, and I understand 
different elements that I didn't uh, like saw the first time. And I was like very, I don't know, it was kind of interesting because I was thinking in a completely different way. So related to the movies, we are going to have the same reaction with a specific movies. Um, I have a, something special with Harry Potter. I am a really big fan of Harry Potter, the books and the movies. And I have seen these movies like 10 times. And it is not a joke. It's something very, it's something real. I have seen these movies like from when I was, I don't know, like 12 years since now that I am a, a, an adult. And I am very fascinated with the movies and I am very fascinated with the books that I am still finding new information on the books and on the movies. And when I um when I am reading the books, I am like very I I, I feel like a, a, a children or a child because um I find new things and it is very interesting for me to read the books. It is like a memory of the past, but at the same time it's something that I am like discovering right now. So for me, my favorite movies or the movies that I have seen uh, more than five times are Harry Potter the saga. Toda la saga de Harry Potter es como uh, esas películas que yo he visto más de cinco o seis veces y que todavía siguen emocionándome. A tal punto que incluso puedo llegar a saberme algún diálogo, sé qué escena viene después y sigue emocionándome de la misma manera que me emocionó la primera vez que lo vi cuando era una niña. So, in that case, this kind of uh, structure is the one that we are going to use to explain these kind of things. And I think that you have a very specific movies or a, a favorite movie that you can see a lot of times and you are not going to be uh, bored of that kind of movies. So I was like explaining a lot of things. Now we are going to continue with number three. An action that has... Oh, I mean, that was completed. Very recently. Often used with just or now. Ok, primero teníamos una serie de la misma acción completada muchas veces en el pasado y que puede llegar a suceder en el futuro. Ahora, también tenemos una acción que ha sido completada muy recientemente y que normalmente utilizamos la palabra just o la palabra now. So, in this case, um, they are talking about this kind of actions that maybe are happening in the past or maybe are happening in this precise moment. So we can have like a very different kind of things. So for the example, we have the following sentence. And it says, I shouldn't eat anymore because I've just brushed my teeth. I shouldn't it anymore because I've just brushed my teeth. Ya no puedo comer o no debería seguir comiendo nada porque ya me he cepillado los dientes. En este momento, o sea, estamos diciendo que acaba de ser just 
es simplemente para hacernos a nosotros entender que acaba de suceder en ese preciso momento o en a, a, hace un par de segundos o minutos. Number four. A change over time. Un cambio en el tiempo. I mean, example. I am thinking about the exams that I am having, but not with you. So in the examples we have, my cousin has grown so much since I saw her two years ago. I mean, I mean, I mean, here. Since I saw two years ago. Okay. Mi prima ha crecido mucho desde que la vi la, el, hace dos años. Estamos hablando de algunos cambios que pueden llegar a darse en el tiempo. Now, we are going to see number five. An incomplete action that is expected to be finished. And in this case, it is in negative. Es una acción no completa o incompleta que esperamos que eh, pueda eh, suceder o que podamos terminar, pero en este caso va a ser con una connotación negativa. And we are going to see the example. The jury has not reached a very yet. El jurado no ha dictado o no ha llegado a un veredicto aún. And the last one, number six. To add significance to completed action. To add significance to completed action. And we have the last example. Macbeth has killed the king. If you have the opportunity to read or you want to read something classical, um, I recommend to you to read Macbeth. It's a great uh, story. It's like, it has a dark, uh, We can say that it's kind of dark, it's a story, but it is very, very interesting and it has a lot of symbolisms and you are going to have a, a time in which you are going to try to guess what is happening on that story. So it is kind of interesting. So if you want to read something like that, you can read Macbeth. It's kind of interesting. Now, we have completed the, um, the present perfect tense. And I was not talking about all of the tenses that we have on the present because we have four. But in this case, we just uh, were talking about the present perfect tense. 
in the second part of this session, we are going to talk about the past tenses. So in this case, I am not going to use just one. We are going to talk about the four different past tenses. And we are going to make a review of the past simple or simple past. In that case, we are not going to um, talk about, I mean, talk a lot about the past tense. In this case, we're just going to have like um, different points in which you are going to remember information related to simple past. And then we are going to move on to the next one and then to the next one and then to the last one. Vamos a hablar del pasado. Vamos a tratar de, de tocarlos a los cuatro, los cuatro eh, diferentes tiempos o los cuatro elementos eh, diferentes del pasado. Con el primero, que es el, el simple past, solo vamos a tomar algunos puntos, solo vamos a tocar algunas eh, ideas importantes sobre el tema porque ya hemos hablado del, el, de, del past. And we already know that this one is a very important tense in English because it's one of the most used tenses in this language. Ya sabemos que el eh, pasado es uno de los, eh, de los tiempos más utilizados en inglés. But give me a second. I'm going to charge the, um, the platform. So give me a moment. It's taking a couple of minutes to charge the platform, but um, now it's here. So we are going to see what is the next topic. So in this um, next topic, we are going to talk about the use of the present perfect tense and also the simple past. Then we are going to see another video that is talking about the past perfect, I mean, the present perfect tense versus the simple past. Now we are going to listen a conversation that is the first one. And then we are going to listen the other information that we have on the next Beautiful. Let's pay attention. Hi, everyone. A conversation will be listened to in order to practice present perfect and simple past at the same time. Notice how they use both tenses during this conversation. Listen and repeat. Listen and practice. I'm sorry I'm late. Have you been here long? No, only for a few minutes. Have you chosen a restaurant yet? I can't decide. Have you ever eaten Moroccan food? No, I haven't. Is it good? It's delicious. 
I've had it several times. Or how about Thai food? Have you ever had green curry? Actually, I have. I lived in Thailand as a teenager. I ate it a lot there. I didn't know that. How long did you live there? I lived there for two years. No, only for... Okay, we have here a very casual conversation uh, between two friends, and they are talking about a uh, food. So that is a very, um, like, common conversation that we can have with the people uh, that we are meeting or the people that we um, have a relationship or friendship or something like that. So in this case, um, they are using both the structures uh, they are using the uh, present perfect tense and also the simple past. So in this case, we begin with Peter that is saying, I'm sorry, I'm late. Have you been here long? And Amanda said, no, only for a few minutes. Have you chosen a restaurant yet? I can't decide. Have you ever eaten Moroccan food? No, I haven't. Is it good? It's delicious. I have had, had it several times. Or how about Thai food? Have you ever had green curry? Actually, I have. I live in Thailand as a teenager. I ate it a lot there. I didn't know that. How long did you live there? I lived there for two years. Están hablando, ¿verdad? De comida. Están tratando de decidir dónde van a comer o qué tipo de comida van a ingerir. Y están hablando de comida de Marruecos. Están hablando de comida de Tailandia. Y se enfocan, ¿verdad? En Thai food. Y pregunta, eh, en este caso, Peter, que, ¿qué tal ir a comer comida tailandesa? Ah, y le pregunta que si alguna vez había probado el curry verde. Y pues Mandy le dice que sí, que ella vivió en Tailandia cuando era adolescente. Y ahí está utilizando la estructura del simple past. I ate it a lot there. Lo, lo comí mucho allá. I didn't know that. No lo sabía. ¿Cuánto tiempo estuviste viviendo en Tailandia, básicamente? Y le dijo que vivió por dos años. So in that case, we are like um, mixing these two structures to create a casual conversation or a conversation that we can have with our friends when we are doing this kind of meetings or something like that. So in that case, you can notice in which spaces you have that information. Now, we are going to see the second uh, video that is the present perfect versus simple past. So let's pay attention. Hello to all. In this lesson, we will learn when to use present perfect versus simple past. What we're about to watch is question form in present perfect. Notice the way to answer. Present perfect versus simple past. Use the present perfect for an indefinite time in the past. Use the simple past for a specific event in the past. Have you ever eaten Moroccan food? Yes, I have. I ate it once in Paris. No, I haven't. I've never eaten it. Have you ever had green curry? Yes, I have. I tried it several years ago. No, I haven't. I've never had it. Versus simple past. Use the present perfect for an indefinite. Okay, so in this case, we are like saying in which cases or how can we use these two structures? So in this case, we have that we need to use the present perfect for an indefinite time in the past. And we are going to use the simple past for a specific event in the past. So that's very interesting because we are talking about um, the past, but we are uh, talking about very specific things on the past. Vamos a utilizar el presente perfecto para un tiempo indefinido en el pasado. 
Y vamos a utilizar el pasado simple para un evento específico en el pasado. No significa que vamos a utilizar eh, para cualquier cosa, sino para eventos básicamente que ya terminaron y que sucedieron en el pasado. And we have the examples. Have you ever eaten Moroccan food? Yes, I have. Or I ate it once in Paris. No, I haven't. I've never eaten it. Have you ever had green curry? Yes, I have. I tried it several years ago. No, I haven't. I've never had it. So in that case, it is necessary that we can focus on the uses of the uh, present perfect and the use of the simple past. Now, we are going to um, have the review of the first of the uh, sections, we're going to call these sections of the simple, the simple tense. I mean, the past tense, not the simple tense. We are going to begin talking about the past tense and we are going to begin with the simple past. Vamos a empezar con el, el pasado simple. Luego vamos a... Um, a ir viendo los otros tiempos del pasado. Mañana vamos a ver los otros tiempos del pasado y cómo vamos a utilizarlos eh, and then the last day we're going to eh, end with the last topic that we have on the platform. So I need to see how much space that I have here. Not a lot. So I'm going to begin in a new, a new page. Okay. Past tense. Number one, simple past. So in this case, we're just going to make um, like some ideas, just ideas, not we are going to um, learn everything for the first time. So in this case, we're just going to, to make some uh, very clue ideas. So, we're going to talk about what is the simple past. We are going to uh, see what are some um, some of the uses and we are going to see something uh, here. We are going to talk about for and scenes. What are the uses of for and what is the use of scenes? En el caso de solo hablar del pasado o de para qué utilizamos el pasado o cómo formamos el pasado, vamos a hablar también de palabras que se utilizan para esa estructura y vamos a hablar del uso de for y del uso de since. En cuáles casos vamos a utilizar for y en cuáles casos vamos a utilizar since. So we are going to see what is this information about. So the first thing that we are going to remember is that this tense shows that you are talking about something that has already happened where in the past, or maybe when we can say. Next idea, it is used to talk about past events that happen over a period of time. It indicates that the action occurred at a certain time and then was completed. Básicamente, y eso ya lo sabemos, utilizamos el pasado eh, simple para hablar de eventos que ya sucedieron sobre un, o en un periodo específico de tiempo. Indica también que la acción ocurrida pues fue en un tiempo específico y que esa acción importante ya fue completada. Si la acción no se completó, entonces no podemos utilizar el simple past. Tiene que ser una acción que ya se completó.
Now we can use the simple verse to talk about past state of being, such as the way someone felt about something. También podemos utilizar esta estructura o este tiempo para hablar de los estados, de cómo alguien se siente sobre una acción que sucedió o sobre una situación que ya pasó. ¿Y ¿En qué momento? Pues obviamente en el pasado. Now, we are going to talk about four and scenes. Or time, in this case, to talk about time. We are going to see two examples um, before to see the information. So in this case, I'm going to write the two examples. And we have the first one. And it says, we lived there for five years. We lived there for five years. And the next one, he has been away since Tuesday. So in this case, we can see like it is a difference um, between, uh, I mean, this one is not like this. A uh, difference between the two examples, but we are going to mark or understand better what is the use of the foreign scenes, because in this case it's like ah I have an idea through the examples, but we need to to be very uh, specific with the use of this. So in the number one we are going to talk about four. So we have four plus period. And we are talking about a period of time. And it says that a period is a duration of time. Five minutes, two weeks. Six years. Entonces, aquí podemos ver que vamos a utilizar el for para el periodo de duración, ¿verdad? De algo por cinco minutos, por dos semanas, por seis años. Básicamente es la duración, ¿verdad? De esa acción. And it says that for means from the beginning of the period from the beginning of the period to the end of the period. Entonces, está diciendo que eh, se le puede dar como la traducción o un significado a la palabra for, de decir, desde el inicio del periodo del, del tiempo, en este caso, porque estamos hablando de tiempo, desde el inicio, desde el principio del periodo, hasta el final o la finalización de ese periodo. Entonces, aquí estamos hablando de eh, periodo de tiempo. 
así como tenemos el ejemplo, we lived there for five years, vivimos ahí por cinco años, la duración que tuvo esa acción. Now, we are going to see since. Since plus point. In this case, it is not a period, it is a point. And it says a point is a precise moment in time. And we have nine o'clock. First January. Monday. And we have the meaning of this one. Since means from a point in the past until now. Aquí tenemos, ¿verdad? El for lo utilizamos con un periodo de tiempo, una duración específica de una acción, de un evento. Y el since lo estamos utilizando con un punto específico. Que dice que eh, es un momento preciso, ¿verdad? Es un momento específico en el tiempo. Y tenemos los ejemplos. A uh, nine o'clock, a las nueve de la mañana, first January, el primero de enero, a uh, Monday, un, un día en específico, ¿verdad? Y significa from a point in the past until now, desde el, un punto en el pasado hasta ahora. And I'm going to show you examples. But in this case, it's like um, the the point or the period of time in which we can use this um, these words. But also, we are going to see in which cases we are going to use for, and in which cases we are going to use since. So I'm going to add something here. And I have two, three, like this. Okay, we have here our table, but I think I'm going to move this one to the next page. So we have here four, and we have here scenes. And in this one, said a period from start to end and here a point from then to now And we have here some examples of a, a phrases that we can use with this um with this word for 20 minutes. For three days. For six months. For four years, for two centuries, for a long time. Forever for a couple of years.
And in scenes, we have here a specific point in the past to now in the present. We have scenes, 9 a.m. Since Monday, since January, since 1997, since 2000, since I left school, Since the beginning of time. And in this case, for, we can use it for all tenses. And since we are going to use it in perfect tenses. En este caso, la palabra for la podemos utilizar con todos los tiempos, con el presente, pasado, futuro, con el presente perfecto, presente continuo, pasado eh, perfecto, pasado continuo, el futuro, uso del going to, del will y todo eso. Entonces, eso sí lo podemos utilizar con todos los tiempos. Pero el since solo lo vamos a utilizar con los perfect tenses, el, el presente perfecto, el pasado perfecto, Y eso, ¿verdad? Entonces, en esos casos vamos a utilizar la palabra since. Y vamos a escribir un par de ejemplos, ya para finalizar, de for y de since. Pero ejemplos un poco más largos, no así de corto, ¿verdad? They study for two hours. Every day. They are studying for three hours today. They are studying for three hours. today. He has lived in Bangkok for a long time. He has lived in Bangkok He has been living in Paris for three months. He has been living in Paris for three months. I know it's time, but I am just going to add the last examples. So we are almost done. He has been here since 9 a.m. He has been here since 9 a.m. He has been working since he arrived. He has been working since he arrived. And the last one, I had lived. I have lived in New York since my childhood, since my childhood. So here we have the difference between the uses of for and since. 
So we are going to end the, the session number two of this last week. And we are going to see each other tomorrow on section, uh, I mean, on session number three. So have a really good night and see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, see you. teacher. See you. Good night. Good night. Good night, teacher. Good night.